we need a real whole system change at many levels, really. Uh, we're facing a, a complete change in the constraints that are driving uh, transport now compared with the constraints that drove the evolution of the auto industry in the 20th century. And uh, the constraints we're now facing are peak oil, climate change, energy security, and, and uh, uh, an increasingly affluent global population. And it is simply not tenable, uh, the path that we're treading at the moment. If we're going to move to a sustainable system, it means living off revenue, uh, in this case, natural uh, revenue from natural systems. And the point about living off revenue, as with money, is that you have to manage your demand to meet supply. The, the upside is that it goes on forever. But if you live in a capital-based world, what you're doing is you're managing your supply to meet demand. And that's what we do with oil. We dig up oil at any rate we like in order to satisfy our demand. Uh, but that, the, the limiting factor there is it can't go on forever. To be absolutely honest, if you, if you sell cars, you make more money by selling more cars. And so your direct financial drivers are for the car to be as expensive as possible, as unreliable and high maintenance as possible, the customer to keep it as short a line, time as possible, and the car to have as short a life thereafter as possible. You have no direct interest in fuel consumption, you have no direct interest in security, because it's not yours. And those, of course, are directly the opposite of the interests of the customer. And one of the key strategies that we uh, have developed is that we're selling a service, we're not selling cars, we're selling a, mobil a mobility service. If you sell a service, you have a direct interest in the car being as cheap as possible, as reliable and low maintenance, because we, we pay for that. The customer to keep it as long as possible, but no longer than he wants it, because we want to have as long a life as possible thereafter, because we can then lease it into the second-hand trade, which is, a tra which is a bigger market than the first-hand market, and the auto industry can't access it. They engage with us on the basis of, uh, of a, a monthly uh, a contract, which they sign up for a year or two years, or whatever it may be, much like a mobile phone contract. You pay a monthly direct debit, and it covers all your costs, including fuel. So when you go in and fill up with hydrogen, you use a smart card, but the bill comes to us, not to you, the customer. So we have an ongoing driver to improve energy efficiency of the vehicle, our, not just our new designs, but our fleet that's out there, in upgrades to improve efficiency throughout the vehicle's life. And we also uh, retain the vehicle on our balance sheet, so we want, we want it to have direct interest in security. So all those drivers are completely aligned with the interests of the customer. And what this has done is it hasn't just slightly ameliorated the drivers to sort of reward resource consumption, it's completely toggled them into reverse. And it drives us to minimise resource consumption. The more utility that we can uh, eke out of every car that we make, the more money we make. And that's completely the opposite of the existing model, which rewards resource maximisation. And or even uh, policymakers now accept the fact that we have got to um, wring utility out of resources rather than squander them. And what earthly chance are we of getting there in a system that rewards the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. I simply don't believe that we can uh, ever uh, uh, achieve a sustainable industrial society based on the sale of product, I'm afraid. It's as simple as that. It sounds, 